How are we doing everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about drum replacement. So what we're going to be doing today is taking an audio file of a particular drum element, say a kick or a snare, we're going to be transforming that into MIDI. Once we do that, we can trigger our own samples, we can edit the velocity dynamically, we can create and destroy MIDI, and we can quantize very easily. And there is a lot of benefits from creating a MIDI file from our audio files in this way. So let's get right into it, right? So uh, this is what I have in front of us. This is what we're going to be working with. I'll play this here. So you can tell right off the bat, the kick isn't where it should be, right? There, It's not big enough. Uh, and we could go through and audio edit this, but for this tutorial, we're going to replace it. So I'm going to make sure to select that track up in the top bar, go to track, and then replace or double drum track. Once you do this, it will analyze, and it's just going through and looking for our transients. It'll try to see where we need to, or where it needs to create MIDI based on reading the file of those transients. And this is the menu that comes up. We're going to make sure to select the, the instrument you want, right? So in this case, a kick. You can do it for a snare. I'm not going to get into a snare track today, but for right now, a kick. And then we can set the threshold, right? So there's some bleed through on this track from the snare. And I'll, I'll actually show you right now. I'll pre listen to it. So you can hear that snare in the background. And what we don't want to do is have our MIDI hear or listen to those snare hits. So we need to set our threshold, which is a cutoff point, right? So anything above that cutoff is going to be put into a particular MIDI note. Anything below is going to be ignored. And so as you see, as I drop this threshold, you can see in the MIDI file, more notes are being added. And that's because it's reading those snares and we don't want to do that. So actually, I'll just listen to this and show you what it sounds like. So that, that it's picking up those snares. Like I said, so that's not what we want. So we're going to keep increasing it until it grabs all of our kicks. So let's listen to that. All right, that's pretty good. You can also trigger on a certain note. For right now, just going to do it to auto. Most people are going to do it to auto. There's a timing offset as well if you want to offset the MIDI notes from the actual, uh, you know, the, the audio file that we're analyzing here. You can even set it dynamically based on the average attack time. And uh, since mine is negative 0.5, it's whatever, I'm just going to set it back to zero. Uh, and then before you press OK, make sure to select the sample that you want to trigger. And uh, let's, what about this one? Sure. Uh, so I'm going to press OK now. And since we selected replacement, it's going to mute our original, create a new MIDI track. That track is going to be named whatever the original was with a plus after it. And uh, now let's listen to our entire track, our entire song. All right, exactly where we want to be. Now, a couple things that I would do after uh, transforming it into a MIDI file. First of all is velocity management. If we open this up in the, uh, the editor here, so as you can see, our velocity is all over the place, and that's not what we want. So I would go through and edit this a little bit. Go through and take some of the ones that are extreme, extreme high, maybe drop them down. The ones that are extreme low, push them up. Uh, drum kicks aren't supposed to be that dynamic in general. I mean, they are, but not at this amount, right? So I would go through and edit some of that probably. Uh, the next thing I would do is probably uh, double this track, triple it, quadruple it, layer your kicks. Uh, and what you can do is you can go about this two ways. You can, for, I don't know, create a new track, you can create an alias of the original, shift, option, click, drag down, and it'll uh, look at this original track. So if you edit this original track, it will be playing down at the bottom as well in all of your aliases. <clears throat> and you can do this for multiple tracks and do it that way, or you can go and select whatever tracks that you have, um, and then you can go to the track again, and you can create a track stack. And that's probably the way I would do it, is go through the track stack route. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things you should be doing with your MIDI after this. You can also quantize it. If you go open up this in the editor again, 
you can see that um, if I get rid of this, you can you can time quantize it, and that is very important. I would probably do that as well. Um, I'm not going to get into that right now, but that's just going to be shifting your all of your kicks so that they're perfectly on time with your beat, and uh, that's exactly what we're trying to go for here with transforming it to MIDI. So that's really all I had to show you guys today. Please take that survey in the description below to choose my next tutorial. I grabbed this tutorial right from that survey. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe, like a bouse, and I will be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.